Salemocracy. Facing down pessimistic politics with realistic optimism. Okay, so Ron DeSantis it has not officially announced that he is is running for president, yeah. but he's doing all the things, and we know he's going to. It's just that he's waiting. And one of the things that he is doing, that was me, not Sweepy, <laughs> that you kicked under the table, um, he has announced a new book, and he's going to be going on a book tour. And in his book, he did talk about Donald Trump a bit, and uh, he also talked about the issues, I guess, that are important to him, really setting himself up uh, in, in the public as a presidential candidate to look out for. Ron DeSantis inching closer to a presidential bid. God bless you all. Making stops across the country, huddling with donors last weekend in Palm Beach, and launching a new book outlining a blueprint for America's revival. People would say, how'd you do it in Florida? The book marks a key step in defining DeSantis outside the Sunshine State, touting his controversial COVID response, proximity to former President Donald Trump, and culture clashes, including with Disney, officially stripping them of their special status in the state yesterday. This Disney ran the show in this state for a long time uh, until I became governor. And we said, you know, we're going to side with the people of Florida. But just because he's not in the race yet doesn't mean other Republicans aren't anticipating the primary battle ahead. I like what he's done. I'm a Trump uh, supporter. Uh, He'll have to prove to me that he would be a better president than President Trump. Uh, Is that guy kidding? It's Tommy Tuberville. (laughs) Oh, is it? Mm Mm-hmm. I thought it was just some rando Floridian. Nope. Well, I'm a I'm a Donald Trump supporter. Is he kidding? It's like Sam Elliott talking here on the clip. Uh, well, he's going to have to show himself. <laughs> if, if elected. A new poll shows DeSantis trails Trump in the theoretical matchup, but sets the stage for an early two-man race. DeSantis' book gives a fresh sense of how he could take on his main rival, which is to say, not directly, if at all. The book mentions Trump more than 100 times in 288 pages and showcases DeSantis as a steadfast ally, both in Congress and as Florida governor. At one point, calling Trump the most famous person to run for the GOP nomination since Dwight Eisenhower and saying that in 2016, Trump had almost instantly built a massive following and was now the man to beat in the primaries. He also parroted Trump's disdain for the media, calling investigations into alleged Russian collusion a media-driven hoax designed to cast doubt on the results of the 2016 presidential election and strangle the Trump presidency in the crib. It comes as others who once stuck by Trump are drawing their own indirect contrast with him, like former South Carolina governor Nikki Haley. I think we need to have a new generation. I think we have to leave the status quo. I think we have to leave the old issues behind. And Trump's former Veep, Mike Pence. Implicit in saying that considering running is the idea that you think you could be at least a different president if not a better president than your former boss can you delineate just one policy difference that you might have with him well i think the times call for different leadership and i'm confident we'll have better choices are you and you're thinking my, about being one than my old running mate uh, come 2024 they all say the same thing when asked what is one policy difference between you and Donald Trump. Yeah. No one ever just answers the question. No one ever says Donald Trump is terrible. The part he's going to ruin the party. We're not going to be able to save the party because that's their concern. Yeah. But they can't say it. They're cowards. They refuse to be honest. It is. It's remarkable. First of all, I'm glad the media is asking that singular question to every single candidate. Name one thing that makes you different than Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. I I mean, any person with any leadership ability whatsoever would say, well, you know, I'm not a prick. (laughs) I'm not abjectly Mm -hmm. anti-democratic. I haven't advocated for terminating the Constitution of the United States of America. There are so many things they could say, and they choose none of them. Yeah, well, and the poll that they referenced in that clip is a Fox News poll from February 19th to 22nd, and Donald Trump was leading in that poll, 43%. Ron DeSantis was second, 28%. Nikki Haley in third with 7%. And Greg Abbott, 2% in the fourth place spot, tying with Liz Cheney. Wow. Well, that's, that is not good for Greg Abbott (laughs) when Liz Cheney's in, in the same breath as Greg Abbott, who is rabidly pro-Trump and the juxtaposition there being that she's rabidly anti-Trump. Yes. So without actually 
coming out and criticizing Donald Trump. The the candidates that are going to be running against him are trying to display how they are different. And Ron DeSantis is doing that in this clip with Mark Levin on Fox News. He recently gave an interview where he was asked specifically about all of the things that they're doing in Florida to prevent people, kids, from learning about the realities of the world. And this is how he defended himself. And then you were attacked by people who purposely twisted what you were saying, that you oppose allowing people to learn about African-American history. You want to clear that up? Sure. Well, uh, Florida, our standards require teaching all aspects of black history, and uh, we think it's important. We also, when we ban critical race theory, uh, which we were right to do, uh, we also required in that same bill that schools have stories of inspiration about great Floridians and great Americans from a variety of different backgrounds. I want students to, to be, to be uh, inspired that they can do well in Florida, you know, as they get old. Critical race theory is basically saying some are oppressors, some are oppressed. What kind of a message is that sending to these very young kids? So, so we require all of that uh, in our standards in terms of the basic history. What the College Board was trying to do, they were trying to impose CRT. They actually were trying to impose in a black studies course, queer theory. They were trying to impose intersectionality and they were trying to impose effectively neo-Marxism. And so the question is, is if that's something you want to do on your own time, you know, you're free to go pursue that. But for our taxpayers to be supporting that type of indoctrination, that is not something that we want to do. We were the only... So this is going to be the new, the new talking point, and I want people to be aware of it because I recently watched like a... 50 minute debate on Fox News with people who had different perspectives on, I, I think it was critical race theory or home education. Oh, that's what it was. Homeschooling well, was vice, and public education. Yeah. What did I say? I, 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 I don't know. Oh, I thought but I it, said it vice. wasn't vice. It wasn't vice? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say vice. Whatever you said, I was like, oh, that doesn't sound right. I think it was vice. Really? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. But um, now we're so far past it. It's been like eight seconds now. And I'm like a fucking goldfish, so I don't remember. <laughs> so <laughs> in in that they were talk critical race theory came up and their their the conservative talking point was well, critical race theory basically teaches black kids that that they are basically bound to be oppressed and that they can't really come up from the position that they've been born into. And who wants to teach kids that? And you hear that talking point coming through in what Ron DeSantis said, that you, that critical race theory teaches that there are oppressors and there's the oppressed. And how is that motivating? I, right. I want to teach about the the great black political figures who, who did good so that I can teach kids that they can become good. It's like no one is teaching black kids that they can't become good. You right. understand that that's happening, right? Well, of not only that, does. not only that, Ron DeSantis in 1961 would have been one of the people who was anti Martin Luther King Jr. I mean, right. when you look back on what the, 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 the polling data suggested was that white Americans, even in like 1963, when the March on Washington happened, August yeah. 1963, they were very much opposed. No, this is the not not the right way to protest. They've got to do it a different way to get the rights and the freedom and the uh, equality that they demand, right. but not this way. The same shit we hear today. So for all of these conservatives who act like um, they revere Martin Luther King and, and what he did, it's just not the fucking way. It's not the facts right. at all. Right. Yeah, so look for Ron DeSantis to continue his his book tour, promoting his yeah. book. Can't his book tour that just so happens to be in states like Iowa and New Hampshire, early primary states. Yes, yeah. <laughs> we see you, Ron DeSantis. We see you. Yes.